All right, we're live. So I have a special video for you guys today. Today we will be assembling the MH14 monocular housing uh, with an Elbit tube. And just go over the differences between this housing and its nearest competitors, such as the RBM14 and your traditional PBS14. And first we'll go over what comes in the box when you order this housing. So in the box, um, it's just a basic white box that it comes in. And inside you'll find your RVM, uh, excuse me, the MH14 housing. And you will get also a resetter retaining ring and this rubber gasket right here. It just looks like a rubber ring. And it's supposed to go between the battery housing and the main housing when you assemble it. Um, what it does not come with is the rear ocular ring and also does not come with the grub screws for the D-ring. It does include a D-ring which is pretty handy for um, your objective lens because if for some reason your object objective lens gets broken and you need to replace it, you could just simply unscrew everything and just take it out in its entirety. Whereas with the traditional PBS-14, you would have to disassemble the entire unit, including the rear lens, take out the intensifier tube in order to reach the objective lens. But in this case with the D-ring, you do not have to do that. However, what would have been nice is uh, if low light innovation just included the grub screws because after you assemble this, what you'll have to do is to screw the grub screws in here to secure both the D-ring and to set your infinity focus. So, would have been nice, but uh, we did not get them. So, if Low Light Innovations is watching this, please include the outer ocular ring and also the grub screws. That would be nice. And also, with the utilization of the D-ring, you will not have to use the internal infinity uh, focus stop ring that goes inside your traditional PBS-14 housing to secure the objective lens um, from screwing itself out. But again, with the D-ring, you don't need that, so that's a nice plus. Okay, um, just to go over this housing, just the basic features. So this housing is made out of magnesium aluminum, and it is, I would say, the nearest competitor to the RVM-14 housing. And also what I've noticed is that this unit, you do not need a light pipe. Um, it did not come with it and you do not need it um, for this particular build. And also it takes your standard EGAC, uh, the pigtails on your intensifier tube, so very similar to a PVS-14 and every other monocular housing out there. And it weighs 3.7 ounces. And I'll put up on the top right the comparison uh, with this unit to the PBS-14 housing and the RVM-14 housing without the lenses. So it's a very strong, sturdy construction, but also being lightweight at the same time. All right, and also they did do something different than your traditional PBS-14 or the RVM-14. And that is the positioning of the on and off and the illuminator uh, knob. Traditionally, you have the knob in the rear, but with this housing, you have everything up front. So you have on and off and on and two settings for the illuminator. One is for uh, map reading, so it's a lower setting illuminator, and one is for greater distance. So that's a more high power illuminator. And you know, that's some people like this feature because they like to have it rather than not have it. But from what I've seen, you rarely use the illuminator on a traditional 14. And even on the R RVM 14, um, although the illuminator is very strong, I haven't had to use it too many times. But maybe uh, depending on the strength of the illuminators on this housing, it's worthwhile looking into again and see whether there is an actual use case uh, for using it now that the illuminator is stronger. 
but uh, we'll talk about that later. And you have your manual gain knob right here up front as well, similar to a PBS14. And for the battery, it takes your AA battery like a traditional PBS14 housing. And for the housing itself, the unique feature also is this cutout right here, um, which has a screw hole right here for any type of um, J arms that you may have already. And also on the side, you have your purge screw to purge your unit. All right, now that we have talked about the basic features, let us build it. Okay, so to build this unit, you'll need a few, few tools and some um, additional parts. So since it did not come with the, uh, an outer ocular lens ring, I have one a spare one right here. So we'll need that. You'll need some grub screws for the D-ring. You'll need your standard wrench for your lenses. You'll need your retaining ring um, tool for screwing in the retaining ring into the housing. And unlike um, the PBS-14, you'll need a hex key that is long and also has the star pattern for disassembling the battery housing from the main housing. And two of the screws right, screws right here are pretty easy to get to, but you need the long hex key to reach inside and get the ones um, deeper inside the housing. So just a small difference in the tools that you'll need. All right, today we'll be building with an Elbit white intensifier tube. All right, so let's take this apart. Okay, so I have disassembled everything. It was pretty straightforward. And this is what it looks like on the inside. And this is where the EGAC plugs in, your pigtails for the inten intensifier tube. And you have your housing right here, which the rubber gasket is supposed to go into place right here. So let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for now. And then I'm going to grab my intensifier tube. Let's just give it a light dusting. I see some dust on there. Okay, I got the intensifier tube in here, but um, this is trickier than I thought. So you have to feed in the pigtails, like almost fold it in. So only the EAC part is sticking out because now it will let you um, assemble it together but it's, it's, it's proving to be a little tough to line up with the, the board. So you have to be pretty careful. Let's try that again. Yeah, so if I just sneak it in like this, I could connect it, but then if I have the EGAT like this with the pigtail sticking out a little bit, I could connect it, but then the pigtail will get in the way of um, lining it up with the battery housing. So what you have to do is take this out a little bit and feed it in. And now you can connect the pigtails with the EGAC. Um, for the sake of not breaking this, um, I'm gonna ask customer service how to install this. All right, so let's put the intensifier tube in here. 
There is a little trick to getting these in. You kind of have to tuck the pigtails inside the housing so you have enough room to put it connected to the battery housing. So after you do that, okay. Okay, now get your rubber gasket. I put it right here. Piece of dust right here. Okay, get your rubber gasket. And let's connect it now. Screw the back ones in first. Hopefully not as complicated as getting the pigtail on because that was tough. Some dielectric grease. Okay, to set your infinity focus, what you have to do is turn the unit on, focus on the stars. Once you're focused on the stars, you want to go past it about 10 more degrees, and then you want to uh, bring your D-ring up to the point where it stops, and then set your grub screw. So that's it. Okay, um, let's go test this out. And if I flip it.